Hello, everybody. Hi, how you doing? My name is Brian Barolo, and I'm here at Resolution Rentals. It's a video rental house, and I'm setting up all their feeder cables for their grip truck and so forth. Um, anyway, I'm here to show you how to make cam locks or install cam locks onto feeder cable. This is what I'm doing, and everybody has a slightly little bit different way of doing it, even though it's all basically the same. So I'm going to run you through it as I do it. First thing is get yourself a space to work on. You get your cables in front of you. you. Get all your connectors, all five colors, black, red, blue, white, and green. I got males here. I got females over here, which we'll get to. And then I got my packages of the hardware, which is the pin, the uh, nuts, the uh, copper, and the screen relief, okay? So the first thing I'm going to do is get my music on so I have my head in the right space. But uh, message for you, chat message Okay. Okay. So anyway, first thing I'm going to do is turn off the music and turn my phone down so I don't get disrupted. Okay. I have my tools here. These are my five main tools. I have cutters I'm using to strip my cable. I have pliers for doing my strain relief. I have my Allen wrench to tighten the nuts into the pins, which I'll show you in a minute. And then I have a screwdriver to screw the screws down onto the boot. And the first tool I'm gonna need is my razor knife. Okay, why? Because I need to open up all my packages. So I'm gonna open up each and every package and dump out the contents so it's all in front of me and ready to work. This is the steps that I do. Now everybody may do a slight bit different than what I'm doing, but that's okay. To each his own. I'm showing you how I'm doing it. All right, done with the razor knife. Now the first thing I would do, and I already did it, was I just trimmed all the ends, made sure they're all nice and clean. Uh, they're not all 100% even, but eh, it's not a big deal. I use my loppers and get a couple of them down a little closer. And I'm saving all that copper in a pile in the corner. Too good to tell. Okay, so now I'm going to take all my boots out and a screw. So on one package, you have boot and a screw to tie the boot down to itself. And then I'm going to get all five of these out. So we're doing three phase. We're talking power and electric, which would be another one. And also a trash can to put all your trash in. Okay? So when I get done with trash, I'm just throwing it all in. <clears throat> get the rest of my boots and my screws out. So I have all five colored boots and five screws to go with them. And then we'll go to the next step there. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to take the pins with the uh, all the parts that go in these bags when I need them. That's when I pull them out. <clears throat> so, first thing I'm going to do is because of the hole in the back of these guys are very, very small. We're going to see it's better on a white one. Okay, and what my feeder is, my feeder is, uh, it's number two, number two gauge. So... On a boot, you have different size openings, all right? Now, I've already figured out that I need to cut, to get this in there, to cut the first ridge, to cut the first piece of boot out because this is a 480 instead of 300. That hole there is for 300. The next one is for 480 and so on and so on and so on, depending on the size of your feeder cable. So I'm going to take my loppers. I'm going to line it up on the very first notch. If you can see that, I'm going to cut off that bit of the boot. I cut, I turn it a little bit, and I cut it off. And that's what I come up with. This I throw away. This boot is ready to go. I'm going to do it for four of the five, and I'll explain that to you in a second. As soon as I get all four of these cut, it's going to be slightly long because I'm doing every single step, and I didn't pre-do any steps, but that's okay. And... Once you see it, we'll get used to it. Okay, now the next thing I'm gonna do is use some WD-40 to lubricate the inside of the boot so that I can slide the cable on. 
through it. So, and I already labeled all of my cables because we are talking five wire. So I'm talking, a, I have a green wire for my ground. I have black, I put tape on them here. So this is my black line. Here's my red line. These are the different hot lines. Here's the blue. That's the three phases. Here's my neutral and, and my ground. So I put a piece of tape on somewhere I don't need it. It's a scram. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is stick the boots on, take my black wire. I'm gonna take a little bit of CO2, uh, WD-40. I'm gonna spray the inside of the boot a little bit. I'm gonna take the cable and I'm gonna force it through. Once you get it in, you might have to use a little force or you loop the whole cable and the whole thing will slide down. Some will slide on easier than others. And you can see that there's some excess there. So normally I will have a napkin or a paper towel. I'm gonna to take a tissue right here and I will clean up some of the excess just because I don't need it. And I don't wanna get it all over my hands. So there we go. And in the meantime, I'm gonna pull that boot right on down. That's about all I need. That's good. Okay, so where's my blue one? Let me get my blue one in here. Do the inside with a little bit of WD. And I'm going to put it on. This one's sliding a little easier. This one I have a label on here. You can't really see it, but it's a uh, company label. And it says what it is and how long it is and how many amps it is. And it's resolution rentals label. And it says 100 amp cam lock, five wire, 50 foot, and then the phone number. And the problem with this is that I use heat shrink to keep the label onto the cable. Now the heat shrink will cause a problem trying to get this boot over because I didn't open it up. Be careful that you don't pull that over. So you gotta kind of work it to get it in there. And I'm in there and it's good. I got some excess, I'm gonna take it off. All right, here we go. Is my white. Same thing. We take a little shot of WD, put it on the ass end of the boot. And I'm going to put this cable in there. Okay. And actually, I should even take this off because I don't need all of these labels. I only need one label per loom, you might say, or tripe, or whatever you may call a gathering a bunch of cables. I know this is under fluorescent lights, not the best. I should have got some real lights and did it correctly. But this is my first video, so there you go. Again, I spray a little bit of lube. I take my red line. I'm going to squeeze my cable in there. And slide it on. Okay. These I don't need. Put them out of the way. I got my five screws here ready to go. Now I gotta get my green wire on. Hmm, it won't fit. So what am I gonna do? Okay, I'm gonna take my razor knife. Instead of cutting off a ridge because this cable is six gauge, we're using two gauge for power for the three hots and the neutral, and I'm using six gauge for the ground. So it is a good bit smaller. All right. So what I'm gonna do is take my razor knife and I'm going to cut out. Be very careful not to cut yourself. And I usually do it down by my side. I'm trying to do it up here so you can see it. I'm just cutting out a little bit of the plug on the end to open that hole up just enough to get my ground wire through there. Be very careful not to cut yourself. And close that razor knife off and put it out of the way. Okay, I'm going to take my lubricant Throw it in here, and I'm going to slip it on. There you go. I got a lot of excess. I'm going to take the excess off. There you go. Okay. Next step is to actually put the pin on, and I'm going to I already slit them open. So I'm going to take all my work out, all my pieces out of the bag here, including. The directions. I'm gonna read those to you real quick so that you know exactly. I don't have to read them, but just to give you a basic. It's cut back the end of the boot to match the power cable diameter. 
slightly undersized to cut to ensure a tight fit between the boot and the cable jacket. Okay, because you don't want water coming up in there. So I have another little trick that I use to help fix that without having to uh, nip the boot small and force it through. So, I mean, eh, you know, to each his own. So then I say spray some silicon lubricant, liquid soap, or cable pulling compound into the boot at the end of the cable jacket to slide it through and slide the boot over the cable. And then it goes into different sizes and some things you have to skip the step and so on and so on. Then it's gonna say strip one and seven sixteenths, 36 millimeter of jacket off the cable end. And that is this. This is the copper wrap, okay? So now let's get into what comes with this. Here's the pin. This is a male, male cam lock. It takes two Allen screws to put in here to tighten down, which we're going to put in right now. And I'm going to put them both in so that they're ready to go. And I screw them down to where they're just pushing through on the bottom here. I'll show you that in a second. Okay, so four turns, five turns. Okay, it's really hard to see inside there, but if you look carefully, you can actually see up inside where, this, where the Allen screw is pushing down into. Now, I don't want to, I want to keep it clear, but I want it in so it's just before it's going to touch the wire. Okay, and I got two pieces of copper to wrap if I need. I only need one because the wire is thick enough. Then I have the strain relief, little thin copper wire. I'm going to show you how to do all of that in a second. Okay. The next is strip the wire down, and then you're going to wrap the copper foil around the exposed wire and wrap the center of the strain relief wire around the cable jacket. I'm just going to put strain relief on there, and I'm going to twist that. And then uh, we're going to insert insert the conductor into the contact with strain relief opposite of the terminal screws. So when I take this and I put the wrap on it, and I put the strain relief, I'm going to insert it opposite. I'll show you that in a second. So the way I do it, everybody's a little different. I don't have a uh, little jig to set up on here. I'm doing it all freehand. So I take my copper, I line it up to the edge of the wire, and then I'm doing it all freehand. I take my loppers, I line it up to the edge of the copper here, and then I will strip the boot. Now be very careful not to cut any wires. And as you start to do this, you will learn your little tricks and tips on how to get your boot off without cutting any wire. I will check it to see if I cut any wires. I did not. I'm used to doing this, and therefore, okay, I'm going to line my copper up on the wire and then I'm going to wrap it right around the wire keeping it as tight as I possibly can get as tight of a wrap as you possibly can because you don't want a lot of fluctuation and you don't want air mass in there or anything it doesn't really matter but you still don't okay now I have my copper wire wrapped Sorry about the mirror back there. I'm going to spend more time setting this up, but it's okay. Now I'm going to take my strain relief. I'm going to wrap around the wire about a half inch down or so. And then I'm going to crisscross my wire. And then I'm going to take my fingers and I'm going to give one turn. Okay. Now it's going to fall. And that's why I'm holding it. And I'm going to take my pliers. And I'm going to grab the knot here and I'm going to twist it. Two, three, four times, somewhere in there. It depends on what it's going to take to get it to tighten down on the jacket. Let me read the instructions for you. Cut the ends, strain, cut the uh, ends of the strain relief wire. Okay, wrap the center of the strain relief wire around the jacket, three eighths to a half inch from the end of the jacket. I went a little bit further than I should have. Um, tighten the wire into the cable jacket by twisting the wire two to three full turns with pliers. Bend the wire ends down so that they will rest over the cable jacket and lie flat against the copper foil. You cut the ends of the strain relief if they're sticking out past the end of the foil. Insert the conductor 
into the contact with the strain relief wires opposite of the termination screws. And then you use a Allen wrench, uh, half inch, 20 set screws to 160 inch torque pads. Okay, I'm not doing all that. And then you slide the rubber boot over and so on and so on. So I'm doing this in reality. So anyway, I have my strain relief here. I'm just tightening it up. I'm gonna tighten up a little more. And I'm gonna take the rest of the wires. I'm gonna twist them and I'm gonna bend them up. It's hard to see. Should have a better background, but I'm gonna take my pliers here and I'm going to squish it against the cable. And I'm gonna straighten out the wires so that they are behind the foil. Okay, and I got a little bit sticking out up the top here. So what I'm gonna do, because I don't want that to come past the foil, I'm going to nip a little bit. Nip a little more so that it doesn't protrude past the end of the foil. Okay, now the next step is to take my connector, which has got the two Allen screws in it. And I'm going to insert this with the foil on top and the strain relief on the bottom opposite of the Allen screws. Okay, here's the Allen screws, here's the wire strain. So it's got to be behind it. So now what I do is I will take it and I will hold it in place with one hand and I will take my Allen key, I'll put it in and I will crank it down. Now it says 160 foot pounds. Well, maybe I'm doing more than that. I don't know. I have a pretty good grip and I will crank this down and make it nice and tight. Okay, and then I'll come back and I'll do the top one. Same. It's crushed in there. The top one going a lot easier. And there we go. Okay, now we're doing the male end. So what I like to do, because I don't trust this boot, if it's a little too loose or something, I'm gonna use some electrical tape. Final tape and it stretches. So stretch it and use it. I'm gonna go over the edge of my strain relief and I'm going to wrap my wire coming down a few inches so I can get past the connector. Then I'm gonna do a second wrap coming up on the opposite side to kind of thicken it up a little bit to help that boot be sealed. If I have to, I'll do a third run down. Break the tape off and now I'm going to slide the boot on. All ready to go. So I'm gonna slide the boot right on up. You have to be careful because there's a label there and that label is gonna take the, it's gonna take the, uh, this one happened. Okay, it's taking the heat shrink and sliding it off, which you really don't want. You have to be very careful about that. And here I am screwed on this. Okay, so I'm gonna take an extra piece of tape. I'm gonna wrap around the edge of the foil here. I mean, the edge of the, uh, Too much, uh, too much lubricant in there. It's onto the heat shrink and it's causing that to shrink back, slip back. Okay, so I tried heat shrinking this again to make sure that it uh, would go better than it was. It wasn't. So what I'm going to do is actually put some tape onto the heat shrink to the cable to hopefully keep it from moving. Okay, now hopefully, no, not happening. It's unfortunate, you will have these problems. There we go. Okay, so I still got my heat shrink on my label. I got my boot ready to go on. I'm gonna line it up. Here's my hold down screw and here's my Allen keys. They all have, my Allen screws, they all have to line up correctly. And you pop it right in, it slips right in. Okay, now you have to look and find a hole. And if you look inside, you will see there's a flat side to the top of the cam lock pin, which should be up straight, even with your tie down screw. Okay, 
So I'm going to push this back and forth until I actually see the screw outlet or inlet or the screw hole with the threads lined up correctly. I'm going to take one of my screws, I'm going to put it all on in there, and I'm going to start to turn it. If I have to adjust the cable a little bit to get it to start to screw, and then here's my final tool. And I will just screw it down, just like so. Okay, there we go. Cam lock, done. I've got tape in there to keep it sealed. Or you can do tape on the outside that I will do on the ground sometimes. So there you go. That's how you do a male connector. I'm gonna sit here and do these guys right now. And then I'm gonna come back and do the females. All right, I really appreciate you coming here. I'm going to end this stream and we'll catch on the flip side. Ciao now.